Welcome to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Jack McLean. I'm your host, and I'll be discussing all things that are coming up to the upcoming week, including our uh, blog post that we've just posted on how far AFL players cover in an Australian rule, in a typical Australian rules football game, in, as well as questions like what's the longest distance an actual AFL player has run in a game? Do I think players are at risk of injury from running too much? And do you have any strategies for recovering after a long game? So if you're interested, g'day, Lucas. If you're interested in that blog post, all you need to do is head over to preparelikeapro.com where we've just released that blog post as well as the YouTube videos answering those questions. If you're tuning in live on our Instagram, g'day, Jake. Make sure to send us through any questions. Um, I'll stick around and answer all your questions regarding your football and um, let's get straight into it. So first this week on Tuesday, I just interviewed Richmond football club sports psychologists. So we'll be um, going through publishing her podcast on Tuesday. We talked about, I've got my notes right here. Actually, we talked about a whole range of different things with Sam, um, her performance um, focuses when working with players that want to perform at the highest level. So tackling things like performance anxiety and how important diaphragmatic breathing is not only in training to transfer to game day performance, but also um, to do it, to practice it in life. So at every red light, she'll practice her diaphragmatic breathing to build awareness. And then she'll educate players to connect that with a specific task that helps with their role. So if you're a forward and you have, and you struggle with performance anxiety, she talked about how important it is when you take a mark for a goal, or if you've got a free kick um, and, you, and you've got that spare time, 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds before you need to dispose the ball, you're lining up for goal to start practicing diaphragmatic breathing, both in training. So then on game day, you have that awareness to be able to apply it on game day. So super helpful um, for, for footballers as well as strength and conditioning coaches or physiotherapists that want to work in elite sport. Um, Sammy talked about her experiences and, and the work that she's done over the last 30 years uh, working in the industry and, and how important it is to build up your experience in a variety of different environments and really own being a generalist early on in your career to be able to allow yourself to really make an impact in elite sport later on. Um, so make sure to tune in. That will be published on our podcast. You can listen to any of your favorite directories on Tuesday. And then our um, Wednesday blog post for next week will be all about how far AFL players typically cover in an in-season schedule, seven-day recovery in a week. So stay tuned for that. We'll publish that on Wednesday as well as some short YouTube videos embedded in that blog post answering some popular questions that we get on our socials and our Sunday podcast will be a old episode that we did last year with David Watts, who was at the time, the strength and power coach at the Melbourne football club. He's now senior strength and conditioning coach at the Queensland Academy of sport doing great things there. And we're going to release our uh, highlight section of that episode. So 10 minutes, a bite-sized episode to resurface the work that uh, he's doing and the teachings that he provided in that episode. So if you're interested in uh, potentially listening to the full episode, maybe start with the bite size. And then um, if you enjoy it, make sure to listen to the whole episode um, straight after it. Our live interview next week, really excited for this one. It's going to be with Ibrahim Karim. He's the rehab physiotherapist for the Blackburn Rovers in the English Premier League. So he's got a great experience working with elite uh, athletes. And we're going to be discussing not only uh, what he does to help athletes return to play and return to performance, but also um, his philosophy um, from a rehabilitation point of view, working with elite athletes in the English Premier League and how he's got to where he is today. Um, so for practitioners wanting to work in sport, definitely tune into this episode. It'll be a live chat on our YouTube channel. That will be next Friday. So Friday, the 12th of August at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. If you have any questions for Ibrahim, make sure to send them through anywhere on our socials. You can direct message them or you can email me at jackapapairlikeapro.com and I'll make sure to 
fit your questions or topics uh, of choice in the run sheet um, so you can hear your answer on the following Tuesday when we release it in the podcast world. Or if you want to tune in live, you'll be able to uh, engage with the chat. Um, we want to make sure we keep it, all our live chats really dynamic. Um, and that's why we, we host them live. So the followers and listeners can tune in and, and engage with the podcast interview and, and send in your questions. If you're listening on Instagram now, I'm just going to reference the um, my computer screen, which is out in front of me. I'm actually sharing, this is a new segment of our weekly update show. For those following our program, I'm going to now do a weekly update um, to provide you as a key focus uh, and also an opportunity for those on our free trial. We offer a two-week free trial on our online high-performance program. There's four different tiers. There's your development program for those under 18, both men and women. We have our gainers program. So for those trying to gain critical mass, build that body armor, um, they do some extra work in the gym. So our gainers program, our maintainers, so those in a good body composition and they just want to purely focus on performance side of things from speed, power, and injury reduction. And then we have our reducers, which is um, not active in season, but we activate that in the off season and pre-season. So for those that need to uh, drop body fat, and need to do some extra metabolic conditioning as well as some extra education around nutrition and sleep and recovery. So if you're interested, you haven't tried our program out, make sure to head to propellacapro.com. We have a free program that you can join for two weeks. It gets you onto our team builder program and then refer to this video. It will live in our academy as well as on the YouTube channel. Um, so if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'm going to upload these weekly updates there so you'll be able to get a sense of what's the focus for the week this week going into the pointy end of the season we're going to focus on um, getting in a bit of a uh, strength exposure so it's a heavy week testing your box squat so your barbell back squat uh, sitting to a squat your bench press your barbell bench pull and then a couple of power metrics that we've been doing throughout the in-season phase so your, your med ball throw as well as your speed band index. So um, looking at your plyometric ability uh, and your ability to be able to generate force rapidly uh, over 30 meters, we count the steps and then you multiply that by the time taken to, to get to the 30 meter um, target. So if you, if you did 10 steps, it took you four seconds, your score is 40 in the speed band index. And that's a good measure for your uh, rate of force development as we want to lower that number over time. The med ball throws real simple one. You're in the athletic position in a split stance and you throw a 20 pound ball as far as you can. And we measure your distance that that ball has traveled. Um, at the barbell buck squat, we're working up to a heavy three. So a three rep max, same with the barbell bench press, barbell bench pull. Um, so those three key exercises that we've been doing over the in season, we're just going to test those so we can use those percentages going into the rest of August, as well as September uh, where we'll be sharpening up and focusing on high intensity, but lower volume. So that's why we want to see where you're at with those key lifts um, to make sure that we're maximizing your uh, effort. Uh, and as we know, this time of year, if, for those that have dropped off their strength training, you want to make sure if you're playing finals that you start jumping back on the horse, because if you if you don't, when the intensity increases, the you're playing against uh, a faster, the best teams and the best players in the league come finals. You want to make sure that you're uh, in your best shape and, and the football is easier when you're uh, a better athlete. So it's not too late to start your strength training now. If you haven't done it for the last few weeks, you've dropped off in motivation, which is very common in July. Make sure to join our free trial, get, get back into have some structure in your routine. We have three sessions a week for our maintainers program and development program. For those on the gainers, it's four sessions a week. And um, it gives you a good opportunity to be able to get a competitive edge by uh, being in an uh, even better version of yourself come finals. In terms of the exercise selection, our main lower body session on Tuesday, we have our weighted Nordics, which is a great hamstring exercise, weighted reverse Nordics. So we've been doing those for a while, three sets of four, a, a heavy sled push over six meters, really encouraging to go as heavy as possible. So we've dropped the distance from 10 meters to six. And uh, we're wanting to increase intensity of that while maintaining good techniques. So remember to keep the hips below the shoulders with that one and, and remain a really stiff ankle, keeping your heel well up off the ground. So we're pushing through your toe and you're putting as much force through the ground as you can with every stride. Um, 
We have our torso split jerk, which is a new movement that we've brought into the program in the last couple of weeks. So it's an explosive movement with light uh, to moderate weight. You want to try and move that weight as fast as you can and uh, make sure when you're driving the bar overhead, you're actually getting under it as you lock out your elbows. Uh, so there's a video tutorial of that exercise. If you haven't done that before, make sure to watch the video before doing that for those on our remote program. Our dead fish rolls, we're going to progress those from being in a short lever position to a long lever. So you extend your arms and legs overhead. We've got our ring dip holds. So really important with the ring dip holds that you keep your elbows locked out and, and keep pulling those rings in towards you. If, you. if you don't have the strength through your straight arm strength through the elbows to do, do it with rings, then just try it with one foot on the ground as you raise your, your knee up with that and progress towards the to double legs over time. So building stability through your uh, stiff arm is really important for holding opponents off the field. Then we've got our single leg elevated uh, Chinese plank. So we're gonna start drip feeding in some hamstrings for uh, exercises um, and progressing our movement with these over the next couple of weeks. So once we hit September, it's just maintenance mode with our hamstring work. We won't be changing any of the exercises. So um, with this one, really important that you dig your heel into the box. And we want to keep around a 20 to 30 degree knee angle um, with that single leg elevated Chinese plank. Yet again, make sure you watch the video uh, if you haven't done that exercise before so you, you know what a successful rep looks like. Moving over to our main upper body strength session on Wednesday, we're testing our bench press, as I mentioned. So make sure you bring your best effort for that. Um, where the percentages will build you up to a 90% effort, and then it's as many reps as possible at that set, uh, ideally trying to get at least three reps to, to show that you've uh, maintained your strength. And then if you get above three, that will update your new one rep max. So really challenge yourself and gear yourself up for a good performance on that bench press on that day. In between, we're going to do some med ball, um, a med ball power circuit. So some granny tosses, med ball, um, rebound throws, rotational throws, and um, lie on your back, supine chest throws as well. So that's just a good way to get your energy up and um, do some explosive um, work in between your heavy bench press. Uh, so we get that contrast effect with our uh, upper body lift. Um, with our uh, part B of the program, we've got our Smith Chain bench throw. So working on some fast bent arm work. Um, the bit, the barbell doesn't need to hit the chest for that. It's all about how far the bar can travel. So think of it like jumping. Um, so we want to make sure we're getting that bar as high as you can away from the chest as fast as you can. Then we're testing your barbell bench pull. So working up to a 90% effort and then it's a, an AMRAP and as many reps as possible at that weight. Same thing as the bench press. See if you can get at least three reps. And if you can better that, then you're going to update your new one rep max, estimated one rep max, that is. And then we finish off with our torso and rotational press. Really important that you're explosive with your feet. So twist your toes and your hips as fast as you can as you rotate um, the bar and our dumbbell beastly just finishing off with a bit of a shoulder and arms pump so dumbbell beastly is a simple ex it's a complex of movements so bicep overhead overhead press into a front raise into a lateral raise and then starting where we finish bicep to overhead press great way to um, elicit a little bit of hypertrophy effect uh, and get you working hard and, and uh, taking you taking those muscles to their limits from an endurance point of view on Thursday, before your main training session for the week, we're going to do your, you know, if you've done a good warm up, plyometric warm up, um, and, and there's a, there's a, in our program, you'll see there's a plyometric series to tick off before doing it. You're going to go straight into your speed bound index test. Okay. That's what I mentioned a little bit earlier on the show. That's uh, testing your ability to um, bound as fast as you can. So it's not about max distance per effort. It's actually uh, about, going from zero to 30 meters as fast as possible with the least amount of steps to get the best score. So if you did it, like I mentioned, 10 steps in four seconds, this time around, try and beat your score by either matching your time and reducing your steps or matching your steps and reducing your time or both. If you're more of a powerful athlete and a faster athlete. Um, actually practice a few of the, like do it over five, 10 meters in your warm up as well. So you get that good coordination through your limbs, your arms and your, uh, and your legs to ensure that you're going to perform really well on that uh, test. Then for our um, full body power session, we've got a, a hang clean high pull. So working on pulling that bar up really explosively um, and triple extending from your ankles, knees and hips all in sync. 
Um, so really coordinating those joints together to, to produce um, max force. Then we've got straight into a chat bar squat jump and they're continuous as well. So jumping as high as you can, as fast as you can, counter movement jump. An overspeed squat jump. So you just lasso the band as the video shows over the rig and the band is going to help you um, produce more speed. So it takes a bit of body weight out and, and that band gives you a nice elastic effect. So you should be able to uh, be really fast off the ground. There are four continuous jumps and um, that series is a really good way to uh, work on your power development in the um, legs. Going over to power uh, part B, we've moved our weighted chin-ups now to a new movement, the power chins. Watch the video with that one. It's quite a complex movement. If you're not up to it and you don't have the, the strength and power to produce that with your body weight, then just do a uh, fast lap pull down um, and you can opt in in the Team Builder app to change that exercise. But if you are, or, or you could try it with a power band and lasso that around um, the rig. Uh, an orange band or red band should do the job. Uh, and then over time, you can start to strip the band away and just do it with body weight. So uh, watch the video with that one. We've got five reps there, continuous. Think of it like a counter movement, continuous jump for the upper body, the power chins. Then we were testing your medicine ball sprint throw. So I have three efforts where you do one each side and record your best rep. And that is the furthest that you throw the 20 pound ball. Barbell RDLs, that's our proximal hamstring exercise. So hip dominant hamstring work. Um, we did our weighted Nordics early in the week on Tuesday. So more our lower um, a knee dominant movement for the hammies. This is now more for the hip dominant. So make sure you're hinging the hips, really load the heels uh, and get a good stretch through the hamstrings and drive up fast with your, with your hips. And then last part, our injury reduction work, we've got our safety bar bulgarian split squats. Um, they're percentage base. So uh, make sure to follow the weight prescribed there. Two sets of five, superseted with the Copenhagen's long lever. Make sure we're dropping the hip on the way down um, as the video shows. And then finishing with a new hamstring exercise, we've moved from the glute ham raise where we're doing those rotational uh, isometric throws to now a single leg arabesque. So it's a little bit more challenging on your um, foot and hip in terms of a stability point of view. You want to hold the RDL position on stretch. That's why it's called an arabesque. That's so different to the RDL. And then you're rotating either throwing the ball into a wall and catching or throwing it into a partner. Uh, and we want to throw that to the outside of the, the knee. So if you, you're, um, you're not throwing uh, inwards towards your body, you're throwing it on the outside of the knee. And for Friday, uh, we have an optional primer session. And that's our typical week in our program. Saturday is game day and Sunday is our day off to uh, make sure that you, you focus on other things, get some good recovery. And then Monday is a 30 to 60 minutes of your own, choose your own journey for active recovery. And that's a typical week on our um, online high performance program. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in joining, make sure to head over to prayerlikeapro.com and click the free program section to join our free program for a two week trial. We'll add the link in the show notes. Thank you for everyone that's tuned in. And uh, if you have any questions or queries, I'm going to do the same show next week and just send them through to us on Instagram, TikTok, wherever your favorite socials are. And I'll add your question in my run sheet and do my best to answer your question. You'll be able to listen to it on the podcast as well as uh, thank you, Elevate Live Virtual Training. Appreciate the, the um, thumbs up, mate. Enjoyed. Thank you for all the time and advice uh, anytime. And uh, yeah, and then I'll see you guys next week on the show. Remember, Ibrahim Karim is on next Friday at 4 p.m. 12th of August. So make sure to not miss that show. I'll see you guys then.